my name is Evan Tauscher, and today we're going to be focusing on left hand technique on the nylon string classical guitar. So there's a lot of bad habits you can start with in guitar playing, whether you just picked up the instrument or you're coming from another style or you've even been playing guitar for some years. That's why I'm going to be starting us out with some do's and don'ts of left hand technique. These are really common errors that you'll see everywhere and I'm going to try to walk you through them. And then I'm going to show you some dexterity exercises that you can start to apply some of these concepts to. That being said, let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, the first thing you want to avoid is wrapping your thumb around the back of the neck like this. Now on the classical nylon string guitar, your neck is going to be much wider than on something like an electric guitar. And for that reason, if your thumb is way up here, then these left hand fingers can't be on their fingertips, which we'll get to later. But when they touch a note down here, they're going to be by default muting the strings that are nearby. For example, if I was trying to play a five note chord like this with my thumb wrapped around the neck and I wanted this open E to be ringing, I'm almost never going to get it and I'm likely going to mute a lot of other strings. But as soon as I bring this thumb more towards the center of the back of the neck, I'm set up in a much more advantageous position so that I can have every single note ringing. So we're setting up our hand for success rather than failure. The next thing you want to avoid is playing flat fingered or on the pads of your fingers rather than on your fingertips. Now this actually goes hand in hand with the last tip because if my thumb is way up here, it's almost impossible to play on the tips of your fingers, at least with more than one finger. But even if your thumb is in the proper place on the back of the neck, a lot of times we can find ourselves playing on the pads of our fingers here. Now if we play on our fingertips, it does a lot of good for making music on this instrument. For instance, if I was playing a melody on the fourth string, and I really wanted the third string to be interacting with that fourth string and ringing, then it's absolutely necessary for me to be on my fingertips. Otherwise, when I try to pluck that third string, it's going to just be muted. So definitely try playing on your fingertips. It's going to help you a lot in your classical guitar journey. Another thing that you might want to avoid is your pinky and other fingers flying away from the fingerboard. A lot of times since we start with our first and second fingers here, we forget about these guys. They just sort of fly away from us. And if we let them fly away, then it's so hard to apply them later. They have such a distance to travel, even if it's only an inch or inch and a half, that's a long ways compared to your first and second fingers, which are already there on the strings and ready to go. So how do we stop that? We bring our pinky in closer to the strings. That usually results in a little bit more parallel of a position with your left hand. So instead of this, a less parallel position, you have a more parallel position where the back of your knuckles, so this side of your knuckles here, is a lot closer to the fingerboard and they're all equally close to the fingerboard in most cases. So when we do that, our pinky is actually in a nice position to be close to the fingerboard. You can try doing something like this. And as you play that exercise, Keep an eye out for every single finger. Are they all staying equally close to the fingerboard? Now these fingers flying away is something you see all the time. It's something I'm always pointing out with my students. And I promise you, if you focus on it for just a few days, you're going to start to see that habit change. One really commonly overlooked aspect of left hand technique is alignment. Now you might notice what I'm doing here or what I'm doing here, right? My wrist is severely bent in either direction. And I'd like you to just try a little exercise here. Take your left hand and bend it this way and try to open and close your hands. It's quite uncomfortable, right? And now flip it the opposite direction and bend your hand backwards and try to open and close your hands. It's pretty uncomfortable. Now move it right to the center to where it's in line in your left hand with the rest of your arm. And now it feels completely natural, right? 
One of the things that you want to do is maybe grab a mirror or grab a camera and just try to see if you have pretty good alignment between your wrist and the rest of your arm. You'll normally feel quite uncomfortable if you're doing things like this. Of course, there are situations where you do have to do that if it's a huge stretch, but the standard position we should look for is alignment. We don't want to see huge arches on the wrist, otherwise the playing will suffer. Okay, great. Hopefully you've worked through some of these left-hand concepts and ideas, so you have a nice setup. Now let's go ahead and focus on some dexterity exercises to get your left hand in good shape to play a lot of the repertoire out there. The first one is a simple one, two, one, two, one, two, and so on, across the strings. And now here, we're not playing a super complex scale, but we can apply a lot of the ideas that we are working on. Those are our thumb position, right? Making sure our pinky's not flying away from us here. Playing on our fingertips, so not like this. And also our alignment between our wrist and our arm here. After doing one and two, you can do two, three, two, three. And after trying your second and third finger, you can move on to third and fourth. These are normally the hardest. Now, say you want to take it a step further and you want to start improving your stretch and your finger independence. In a very similar way, we're going to be starting with just our first and second fingers, moving to the fifth string. But then we're going to skip the fifth string and go to the fourth. And we're going to follow that pattern, then moving to the third string, then the second, then the first. Then we'll move back to the second, then the third, and so on. And if that's a little bit too difficult, don't worry about going all the way to the first string. Even if you're just skipping a single string, that's okay. Or maybe even making it up to the third string would be really great. And next, you're going to use your second and third finger. Then, using your third and fourth finger. Now this one is considerably more difficult, so don't feel pressure to go through the whole exercise. Your third and fourth finger aren't as often in positions where they have to traverse the entire fingerboard. Okay, I hope these left hand do's and don'ts help you set up your left hand in a healthy and efficient way and that these dexterity exercises help bring you to the next level. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to check out the other videos. Thanks.